pulling the tape, masking tape, and paper off from the second layer of camouflaging. This is the exciting part, which does take some time. And with recording and only using one hand, it can take a little bit of time. But check this out. Look at this. Layering. So this is what you have to do when you don't airbrush. And sometimes you still have to do this when you airbrush anyway. So first portion of the camouflage job was using yellow mustard. Yellow mustard and then now black. So the flat black is an older can of uh, testers. Flat black right there. Model Master. But the Model Master paints seem to have a pretty long shelf life. So this is pretty awesome. Just getting off a piece of masking tape on the end. The Timia masking tape is so good. If you put it on, there's zero, like no bleed. As long as you got your edges pushed down good, it almost never bleeds. Really amazing, actually. So look at that. Ooh, that looks... So two layers of flat red primer from Rust-Oleum. Three coats of olive drab, uh, olive drab Tamiya. Yellow mustard first. Round of camo, flat black, testers model master, second round of camo. So let's keep pulling this off. This is pretty, this is, in my opinion, the most exciting part of painting is the reveal. And you know, if you did a great job or a terrible job, either way, there's, you know, if you want to go back to square one, it's going to be real difficult at this point. But we are getting there. I didn't go through too much blue tape. About three quarters of um, a roll, maybe at the most. That's not bad. Wow, look at that. Ooh, love it. Here we go. I could have used, um, I do have a really nice uh, Posh airbrush right there. That's the um, compressor. But I uh, didn't want to do that. I was looking for more sharp edges. Oh, there's the Roadrunner anyway, 1968. Road Roadrunner hanging out with us today. So it's really up to you how you go about it. I've done different tanks with airbrush. It really depends on what kind of finish. You know, and then if you use enamels too when you're airbrushing, um, you have to keep in mind the cleanup. Ooh, that looks really nice there. Look at that. And the cool thing with using the black is uh, I was able to hide a lot, of the, a lot of the imperfections from when I put down the Africa yellow. So this Africa, African yellow mustard, here it is right here. Really nice color, by the way. Right there, Africa mustard. So this is the color that would have been used and fighting in North Africa. Of course, we all know, I doubt that a single KV-2 made it past the um, front with Germany, you know? Except most of the ones that Germany took were rolled back and refitted or whatever they did with the captured KV-2s that they ended up using in the German army. But, um, hold it. That looks so awesome. Look at that. Oh, man, it looks so good. It came out even better than I thought it was going to come out. So now it's just... I just finished painting this not even 10 minutes ago. And since we live in Arizona, it's so dry. And it's a sunny day, so the, the paint just cures so fast. You don't have to wait hardly at all to... Um, remove masking tape because the paint's going to be hardened already you know i mean yeah it'll maybe it'll take a few more hours at the most completely but it's definitely um cured enough to be touched handled and
A oh, little bit of black went through on there, but that's all right. Patterns are random anyway, as long as they're clean. That looks really clean there. A little little pattern went right there, but that's okay. It's actually, un, it was unintended, but um, I actually like the way that it came out. And the cool thing is, since I put so many coats of base coat, look at that with the, that looks really awesome. The black really complements the mustard and the olive drab. I think they go really, really well together. So let's see the front end. Then we'll have to move the tank around. So going at it here. But like I said, this is, if you painted, so when anyone that's, watch, that's watching, if you painted RC cars, plastic models, you know that the reveal or removing your masking is one of the best parts. And the cool thing is I can really pick up the masking tape without damaging the olive drab because it's it's Tamiya olive drab. So it's nice, solid, very durable paint. And if anything gets messed up, you can always do a quick touch up. But I laid down enamels in order to get a more durable finish because these, this tank's radio controlled. So it will be on our massive battlefield, out in the dirt, out in the grime, running, driving, fighting. So, hmm, to pull that off right there, actually. Ooh. I think this took an overall, probably about an hour and a half to two hours. Took the, there's the barrels cleaned up. All right, let's go and take that off the gun. Let's flip the tank around. Carefully, carefully, carefully. There's the pile of trash so far. I think my intention was to maybe have a little black here too, but that's okay. Well, there's enough. I didn't want to go crazy with it. Because the thing is, when I was researching Russian tanks with camouflage, there's the Russians did not go too crazy with camouflage like the Germans. Because I think they cranked out so many tanks that they did not take the time and energy to um, camouflage them. What they say, a lot of the tanks went straight from the factory to the front line. I mean... If you look at all the KV-2s, very few actually had any type of camouflage back then. Um, I mean, Tigan and, was it Toro or Tigan had on their, one on their box had a lot of camouflage, but I don't think that was periodically accurate because all the historical photos don't really show a KV-2 with much, if any, camouflage. So I didn't go too crazy with it. I went with a scheme that I thought would look good when battling in a forest um, type of scenario on the um, Russian front with Germany or, you know, e the Eastern front, let's put it that way, is what I was shooting for. Got to get that. Good thing is, is to me, a tape is really great stuff. Just got, it just, it's a bit thin. So almost got that. I'm having a hard time getting that. Might have to touch that up a little bit now. That's okay though. Can shoot a little bit of paint onto a piece of cardboard and then use a quick brush, brush action, get that taken care of. I didn't even have to take the wheels off because I the tracks. I just throw a piece of paper underneath, taped it up. Perfect. You know, I don't even know if I'll paint the wheel um, assembly area, the uh, the sidewall, the tank lower hull. I'm not sure. And the cool thing is, you know, a lot of this will see wear and tear. Um, I will definitely work on um, weathering this a little bit too. 
Cool thing is it gets weathered anyway out there in the field when we're running the tanks from the dust and the dirt and the exposure to the sun and everything. So I don't have to go too crazy with weathering. But, but man, that looks really good. It's a little bit less sun. Wow, that looks awesome. I'm very happy with the way that came out. Next step is dark coat, which is a light black mist from a distance. A very, I'd probably have to do that with the airbrush. You really can't, I mean, you, uh, you can't really accomplish that with a spray can. The volume is too much. I mean, you could pry from a distance, but I'm not gonna attempt it. Um, I'd rather do it with the airbrush where I can get a very fine mist and it'll be from a distance. It won't be right on top of it. It'll be really kind of, just, just enough to kind of darken things up just a teeny bit. Then the weathering will come in with acrylic. I would think it was acrylic with a little bit of mineral spirits and that, mineral spirits and that'll flow right into everything. So that looks really good. Let's put it on a white surface where we can really see it. Oh man, that looks awesome. I'm sure my wife won't mind. <laughs> I came out. The black really helps. Look at that. The black looks so good. What a great color combination. I've done olive drab and dark yellow before, but uh, you know, dark yellow is on a lot of those tanks already. Well, except the leopard, of course, and the um, Pershing, but still. So there we go. All right, guys, I'll do another video with more.